for some, these days are very much like the, the 1950s were. There is legislation that will be looked at in history books as example of the bigotry Americans had to endure in this era. A great example is this right here. The trans Youth Ban in Tennessee. This is from the Tennessee Lookout. Both House and Senate versions of a bill to ban health care providers from treating transgender minors with gender-affirming care took steps towards becoming law, passing handily in the Senate Judiciary Committee on Tuesday and the House Health Committee on Wednesday. The bill not only prohibits health care providers from treating transgender minors, it also sets up a system for reporting violations to the Tennessee Attorney General. It would also give parents of a person who commits suicide after receiving gender-affirming care. Listen to this. The right to sue a physician who provided the care for up to 30 years after the teen reaches the age of 18. Up to 30 years. In other words, making it as easy as possible to intimidate physicians who are treating children. Treating children. SB1, the bill is called, passed in judiciary on, party, on a party line vote of 7 to 2. Just remember, it is good to get as many Democrats as you can in any state. With Memphis Democratic Senators London Lamar and Sarah Kyle voting nay, Kyle raised questions about the state's role in legislating parental decisions on health care. You could talk to 100 different parents and hear 100 different ways to take care of a child, for a child. I might not agree with all of it, but it should not be a crime to disagree about the best way to care for our children, said Kyle, a Memphis Democrat. We're usually about parents' rights. The bill is taking away rights from parents. We should support the freedom of Tennesseans to decide their health care on their own, but this bill is saying government knows best. Do recall that once upon a time, Conservatives said, I don't believe they ever meant what they said uh, past the days of uh, wearing Klan robes. But back in the day, conservatives did used to say they were for small government. Now this is what they are pushing. Of the five speakers testifying before the Senate committee, four opposed the bill, including Kathy Sinback, executive director of the ACLU of Tennessee. Sinback told lawmakers her organization is prepared to sue the state should the measure become law. Courts across the country have recognized that this type of legislation violates the equal protection and the due process rights of adolescents, their parents, and their doctors, Sinback said. This bill discriminates on the basis of transgender status and infringes on the fundamental rights of parents. For those reasons, it triggers the highest level of constitutional scrutiny which means Tennessee will carry the burden of providing that this law advances important interests and the state of Tennessee simply will not be able to prove that. She said no state has be warned, however. We have a bizarrely right-wing Supreme Court. Democrats have failed to pack the court. They haven't even addressed it as a, as a remedy for our broken court system currently. Uh, that's a problem. That's a significant problem. So if this gets to the Supreme Court, don't expect legal reasoning to be the, uh, the saving grace here. The House discussion, and let's get into the good pit, pit, huh, let's get into the good part. We've got a video clip coming up on this. The House discussion on Wednesday featured pointed questioning by Democratic representatives John Ray Clements, Bo Mitchell, and Caleb Hemmer of Matt Walsh a right-wing podcast host, evil bigot, and writer for the Daily Wire, which is based in Nashville. I might have added one of those descriptors. In September, Walsh posted online edited videos of physicians at Vanderbilt University Medical Center's clinic for transgender health and inaccurately claimed children are drugged and sterilized, among other false claims. Why? Why would he have to edit those videos so? because they weren't saying what he needed them to in order to make a bigoted point. Walsh also hosted an October anti-transgender rally, the son of a... in Nashville that included as speakers Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, 
and State Senator Jack Johnson, who is sponsoring the Senate bill. So, folks, to be clear, this has passed already, and it's it's gonna hurt trans folks. It it just is. Uh, at a minimum, it's going to give legitimacy to the idea that you can legislate against somebody based on their identity and not uh, think of yourself as a bigot. Don't get it twisted. These people are all bigots. These are all people who would have been supporting separate water fountains uh, 60 years ago. That's who these people are. It did give us one glorious gift, which is Matt Walsh getting grilled by the uh, by uh, the representatives from District 50, 55, and I think 59 out of Tennessee. Here they are. Can you give us a summary of your educational background or your health care education? I didn't go to college, but I did go to school long enough to learn how to read so I can read the data for myself, and that's exactly what I've done. And for what purpose do you conduct your research and use this brain of yours? I use it for the purpose of trying to protect children from being castrated and mutilated. You don't use it to get clicks? Well, are you... So... Matt Walsh, significantly better at uh, uh, dodging these lasers, having a prepared answer for the, these obvious questions like, hey, aren't you unqualified? Because he's used to being asked, hey, aren't you unqualified to be saying the nonsense you're saying? Because he's unqualified to be saying the nonsense that he's saying. He's a con man. And, you know, he cons bigoted people into doing uh, awful things. Using it right now to try to get clicks with this interaction? You know, if you're going to come before a committee and make mischaracterizations and misrepresentations, it's fair game for us to ask you your educational background. Doesn't miss a beat. I love it. You seem to have started this, so you have no medical background, correct? Uh, no. You're trying to address good public policy, correct? Yes. I just have to question, you know, some of your public policy. Singapore is able to have nice things in part because they execute drug dealers by hanging Jesus. and arrest even petty vandals and thieves and beat them with a cane until they bleed. We don't have nice things here because we aren't willing to do what is required to maintain them. I kind of have to question your public policy beliefs. And you also stated yeah. there'd been no studies. Well, I'm sitting here holding a study from the American Academy of Pediatrics, suicide disparities between transgender and cisgender adults and children before you state things you may need to know all the facts just tearing him to bits and doing a hell of a good job bringing the report out doing the work that is someone who's earning their paycheck good job people in the nashville area for uh for electing these folks your blog at about 16 you're an adult who's mature and can make decisions you're that at 16 i don't care what anybody says even going so far as to say when you're 16 you should be married and pregnant 16 is an adult in your view why does this bill have minor defined as 18 i was a, a radio host 13 14 years ago in my early 20s it's also not an accurate reflection of what i actually said i was talking about mm, the fact that nice people though. tended to marry young historically and that's all that that was about how does that relate to the, to this to all of a sudden act like this phenomenon of girls getting pregnant at that at a, at a young age that we consider young 16 or 17 to act, to act like it's a new thing is ridiculous it's always been that way girls between the ages of like 17 and 24 is when they're technically most fertile recently in the last 30 years or so we decided that's way too young to start a family so what I'm saying is that the problem is not per se teenage pregnancy. It's unwed pregnancy. That's the problem in society. So, I mean, you just don't get more satisfying than watching Matt Walsh get trashed in an official hearing. Oh, you love to see it. Well, what can you do about this? As far as the bill goes, well, as far as Matt Walsh's uh, uh, Comedy Central roast uh, in the Tennessee, what was that, the House, Senate, eh, in Tennessee, um, you can tell those, uh, you can tell those representatives that they did a good job. I mean, they 
it's good to give encouragement to people who do well. Uh, and I assure you, they, they get all kinds of hate mail constantly from cultists. So a couple of voices saying, hey, I saw what you did and I liked it. It's going to go a long way. I have their Twitter, uh, their Twitter handles in the description. Send them a tweet if you're on Twitter. As far as combating this uh, bigoted bill, I would highly recommend, if you have the means, donate a couple of bucks to the ACLU. They have been fighting for free and decent lives for America uh, for decades and decades. They are largely responsible for some of the decent things about America that we take for granted these days. It's because they fought the good fight. If you have a couple of spare bucks, if you're wondering what's the best I can do with this $10, $15, whatever, consider donating it to the ACLU. Because my God, they've earned it. And they're going to be the ones taking up this fight. I wish them luck. At the very least, they can do what Trump does and delay this. And hopefully, things change between now and when there is no more delaying it like perhaps America comes to its senses. 